Hi, I'm Kurt Mitchell. Welcome to the In the Style of Brian Setzer video. Uh, we're going to tune up. First thing I want to do is tune up. We're gonna, I'm going to give you an A or an open fifth string to tune to. Uh, if you have a tuner, go ahead and tune to your tuner because we're going to be in standard pitch the whole time. We might drop D from E to D. We'll see later. We, we're not sure yet. But uh, other than that, um, we're going to be in standard pitch, okay? So I'm going to give you an A, open fifth string. You tune to my A, stop the tape, tune the rest of your guitar to your A, and then come back, check, make sure we're in tune, and we should be able to be in tune the rest of the tape. Here we go. All right, I want to talk a bit about the gear. Um, I'm playing one of these big, this one's an Epiphone, I'm playing one of these big semi hollow body, this is actually a hollow body guitar with a big B tail piece on it, right, for this. And uh, the main pickups I'm going to be using is the ones in the middle. You got this here, and the, and the bridge, or the neck, I mean, and these two in here. And that's that, that's a tone that, that's usually going on there, right? Um, I'm going to probably be sitting sideways with it because after all the years of drinking beer, my belly lets this thing stick out here way too far for me to play it like this because my arm's all horked over like that. So I'll be playing it like this. Plugged into uh, a friend of mine's I borrowed a 1964 Blackface Fender Twi uh, Super Reverb. It's a deluxe reverb. So I'm using the reverb on it, okay? Just a little bit of reverb on it. And I got it jacked up and plugged into another cabinet and mic'd, okay? I got a delay, there's a little rolling delay and a little rolling uh, uh, distortion box. That's all we're going to be using. So straight into the amp, but if you jack the amp up, you get that creamy sort of non-distorted distortion, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not buzzy, uh, unless you need the buzz, if we need some buzzy distortion, I'm going to hook up that little yellow pedal. But uh, we're going to be using that delay a lot, and I'll show you how to set the speeds. You set them for slap back, and we'll get into, into that in a minute. But uh, as a matter of fact, let's get into it now because the very first riff we're going to do requires it to be on. So here, check it out. It's a slap back, right? With about two slaps. That's actually like four. But it gives you this. Okay. Now the reverb's a little heavy right now. I might turn that back a little bit so it gets clearer. But that's... Uh, that's basically how we get this sound, all right? Let's get on with riff number one. Slower. Slower. One more time on the pick end. This got a sort of a swing thing to it, just straight up and down, watch. But with an upstroke on the first beat. All right, this next riff, uh, I, I saw him playing, and, and he was using a, the way he was holding his pick to Travis pick, he was holding it like this. And he was picking with his thumb and his middle finger. Now, it seems to me that you can either use your pick and your middle finger and not have to deal with this, but of course your thumb has a whole different vibe to it. But I'm going to hold it like I do when I used to, when I used to play my Van Halen riff. I'm going to hold it right here, all right, in my middle finger. It's just as easier for me. It's hard for me to bend my finger up in such a fashion to keep it controlled like that. And it's going to fall out of my hand. And my index finger is better at this than my middle finger is, if you follow what I mean. And a Travis pick is sort of a bass thing where it goes... Now we're going to do that a lot. We're going to do that a lot throughout the tape. So it's it's kind of hard to get down. You might want to get it down without your pick. You know what I mean? All right. 
And uh, it's like I said, it's, it's a cool thing to get down. Once you get it down, it's way, way too fun. But until you do, it's, it's kind of hard. You can also, like I said, hold your pick. If you're going to slobber it all over myself. There. If you uh, are going to hold your pick. And then you don't have to do anything with your pick. If you use your middle finger and, and possibly your ring finger. Uh, all the stuff I saw him do, he was only using two fingers, right? Holding it like this and using two fingers. So you can use your middle finger and your thumb and not have to deal with this pick thing. Unless you want to. If you can hold your pick like that, good for you. It's just real hard for me to do. All right, let's get on with uh, riff four. One more time. Riff five. Riff six, this is where the delay has got to be set just right, okay? One more time. Riff seven. Riff 8. Slower the right hand. I'm using my two fingers here and my index finger, like I said before. However you want to do this, you go ahead and figure it out for yourself. Riff 9. A little slower. Once more with the right hand. Riff 10. Here's a right hand on that. Riff 12. Let me show you something here. Uh, this next riff, I'm going to show you riff 13. 
is indicative of the way he plays, okay? He's going to be sort of Travis picking. I'm going to use my pick and my, my two fingers because, like I said, that's just easy for me to do. Whatever's easy for you, figure it out. But he's playing these seventh chords. There's a sixth added and then another seventh. And then barring them. Then here and then here. All right? And that's what he's doing through this whole thing. So here's, he uses those a lot. He also uses these uh, nine chord a lot. And then he's got some other jazz chords I'll show you probably at the end of the tape if we don't run across any riffs with him that, uh, that he uses too because he, there's, a, there's a lot of big swing. He's got a lot of swing in him, you know what I mean? He plays a lot of jazz too, it seems to me. And then this rockabilly stuff's, uh, it's hard to explain. He also plays really hard, you know what I mean? He plays real stiff and real hard. And uh, that's what gives you that, uh, and, and put the delay on it. And that's why his amps distort pretty good, too. These amps, you got to really crank them up to get them to distort. When you play them hard, you get that attack and that whole feel, so. One more time. One more time with my right hand. I'm just sort of, it's not real accurate, this, this, what I'm doing here. It's just sort of like this. Uh, we're going to use our neck pickup here, okay? Riff 15, I want you to understand that uh, he's hitting all the notes here and then he misses these. He's not hitting that and he's not hitting this either until he gets to here. So it goes like this, 15. One more time. Riff 16, we've gone to back to the two pickups now, okay? Middle switch, here we go. Riff 17, this is sort of a whole tone thing, it's kind of cool, check it out. Uh, our delay's back on real heavy. So this is Riff 18. Riff 21, a bit of uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan here, check it out. Uh, 
remember I told you I was going to use a little Roland uh, distortion box? I completely lied. The more I tried to get it to sound right, it didn't sound right. It has too many mids. It's called a super driver or something. It didn't work with this amp. So I got a, a Distortion Plus out, and it seems to be working just fine. Uh, but these, uh, these riffs with the big band stuff, a lot of it's very distorted. So uh, I wouldn't go overboard. It's not, like, it's not like heavy metal. It's just got some clip in it, so it's a little bit buzzier than the other tones. All right, here we go. Riff 22. Rift 23. I'm using my uh, two fingers here and then right here. Here we go. Rift 24. Rift 25. Rift 26. One more time with the right hand. Notice we're on our bridge pickup here. Twenty-seven. He straightens up the beat instead of swinging it. It sounds cool. It's like this. We got our delay going on this uh, real slow. Okay, so it's like this. All right. So I just turned up. I just turned my delay down. So it's going doink doink doink. But it's actually a triplet, so if you think about the song going... It's a triplet, so... It's like a quarter note triplet, or a half note triplet. It's one of the two. Twenty nine. Rift thirty.
Rip 31. <laughs> Rift 32. Rift 37. Here's Rift 38. Rift 40. Well, that's about the end of it. Uh, Brian Setzer's a killer guitar player. He, ha he fuses a whole, whole bunch of stuff into his style. He's got jazz and, and big band and... and uh, rockabilly and bebop and, and rock and roll and blues and all these other styles. It's hard to get one of these guitars to, uh, like I said, I got this big beer cut, so it's hard to, hard to get this thing to hang out. If you can't afford these guitars, don't worry about it. If you want to buy one, buy one, because they're cool. But uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Don't worry about the gear, the 64 amp and the, all that crap. Just Concentrate on getting the riffs down so that you can have fun playing the riffs along with the, the records as you, as, you, as you play along. Um, the finger picking thing with the pick, like I said, figure that out for yourself. And once you get it down, it takes a long time to do. Play it slow like 10, 12 times, some, whatever you're working on, and you'll, and you'll get it, and it'll come up to speed. Uh, what else? I had a great time making it. Uh, if you really, if you really want to get authentic, though, you have to have that little slapback delay. So that might be one thing you might want to want to invest in, so you can get that little slapback going. Uh, until next time, I'm Kurt Mitchell, and it's been nice talking to you.